Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be trying to answer a question that's very difficult to answer. How many galaxies are there in total in the visible observable universe? And that's a question that's almost impossible to answer, at least at the moment. Because when you really think about it, it's actually very difficult to count the total number. As a matter of fact, if you were to start counting at least one galaxy per second right now, you might get to about 2 billion, maybe 3 billion galaxies by the time you reach the last days of your life. And that kind of gives you an idea that there are a lot of galaxies. And those 3 billion galaxies that you might be able to count to, that's just a tiny, tiny amount compared to what we believe is out there. Now, interestingly, when I was still at school, we were always told there are approximately 100 billion galaxies out there, at least in the visible universe that we can see, not the invisible, unobservable universe that's beyond our reach already. And this idea of observable universe is essentially because the universe is expanding and some of the edges of the visible universe are slowly disappearing from our view. Which of course means that there are still a lot more galaxies in the unobservable invisible universe, but by definition we'll never really be able to see it and even more galaxies are going to become unobservable with time. But even in the visible universe, there are a lot of different types of galaxies. And even here, at least right now, it's almost impossible for us to truly know how many of them there are. We just know that there are a lot of them and that they also come in different shapes and sizes. Some being more typical, similar to the one we live in, some being a little bit more unusual and some being very different. As a matter of fact, in this particular galaxy, you can see that there's another smaller similar galaxy inside of it. Although in this case, it's not really inside. It's much, much farther away, and it just so happens that they align together to create this view. But one of the first attempts to try to figure out how many galaxies there were was to essentially look at an extremely dark spot with the beautiful Hubble telescope, and then by trying to see how many galaxies we can see in this dark spot, the scientists tried to estimate the total number of all of the galaxies in the entire universe. And so using this image known as Hubble Ultra Deep Field, the scientists were able to estimate the number at around 100 billion to maybe 400 billion at the max. But that was years ago. And since then, this value has slowly been going up. Specifically, only a few years ago, back in 2016, another interesting study used what's known as the galactic density to try to create a new estimate. And back then, the scientists realized that we were off by at least a zero. In other words, there were possibly about 2 trillion galaxies, 10 times more than we initially anticipated. Just to give you perspective here, if once again you sat down and started counting one galaxy per second, and essentially just looking at each of these galaxies for one second, and you wanted to cover all of these 2 trillion galaxies, it would take you about 64,000 years. And yeah, nobody has time for that. So we have to figure out a much better way of doing this, and with time we started to get more and more techniques. And one interesting way we could actually try to estimate the total number of galaxies is by essentially trying to see how much total light we can get in a certain location in the darkness of space. In other words, let's just say we look at different spots and we try to calculate the total amount of luminosity received in a certain frequency. For example, in optical light that we can usually see. By then trying to estimate how much light we can get everywhere in the universe, we can kind of estimate how much gas and how much different types of stars should be emitting this type of light. And so in some sense it's sort of like looking at the cosmic microwave background and trying to get the microwave background of the universe, but instead of the microwaves, here we're using visible light. And normally the scientists refer to this as cosmic optical background. And this technique has been previously used many, many times, even by Hubble telescope. Although unfortunately, the problem with Hubble is that it's really, really good at looking at far away and very hard to see objects. But it's not so good at looking at nothing, at looking at complete emptiness and trying to see just light coming out of nowhere. But in the past, scientists still have tried this with Hubble telescope. They've also tried this with the Pioneer probes, with the Voyager probes, and even ground telescopes. But the problem is, if you were to measure this optical light close to planet Earth, you unfortunately start seeing a lot of light scattering from tiny, tiny particles, usually orbiting in the vicinity of the planet. So basically all kinds of different micrometeorites, all sorts of microscopic dust, and interplanetary material. So really it kind of helps to go really, really far away from the sun, and the farther the better. 
Because if you could reach a point in space where it's extremely, extremely dark and almost no particles are present, you can see the complete darkness of space and thus calculate the total cosmic optical background, which would then naturally help you estimate the total number of galaxies out there. And it just so happens that we do have a probe that has an extremely good camera and is also really, really, really far away from planet Earth and from the Sun. As you can probably guess, the New Horizons probe. The probe that even at these distances have been actually conducting a lot of really, really good science and returning a lot of amazing data. One of the more important instruments on board the probe is what's known as LORI, Long Range Reconnaissance Imager. It's what allowed us to take all of these incredible detailed pictures of Pluto and is essentially the most complex camera currently so far away from the Sun. It also happens to be in an extremely dark environment, really, really, really far away from anything bright, which of course presents this as an opportunity to once again try to study this so-called cosmic optical background and try to find out how dark or in some sense how bright the darkness of the universe actually is. In other words, an attempt to find out how many galaxies are out there. And looks like now we have an answer from the paper you can find in the description below. By doing this several times and looking at these seven specific locations around the galaxy, and by essentially looking at complete darkness and then studying the average light in this darkness, in the location that seems to be approximately 10 times darker on average than the location where Hubble was able to do it, the scientists in this paper were able to see that there is a lot of unusual diffuse light that wasn't actually visible before. In other words, there was more light coming from these dark spots than the scientists originally anticipated, approximately double the amount. And what this implied is that there seemed to be a lot more undiscovered galaxies than even the 2016 paper predicted, suggesting that the overall limit of total galaxies is maybe closer to about 4 trillion, or possibly even more. Once again, if you were to count them one by one every second, it would take you about 130,000 years. However, here we have to be careful because this diffuse light could have come from some completely different phenomenon. For all we know, maybe this brightness is actually caused by some other mysterious phenomenon, like maybe dark matter. Maybe this is what dark matter is producing at these far, far away distances, and it's not so dark after all. On the other hand, it can also be related to just the gas itself located in various intergalactic spaces. In other words, there's a chance that maybe what we're looking at is the light produced by intergalactic cosmic web. At the moment, there's really no way to find out what exactly is causing all of this. It just, it seems to be really there, and the galaxy has twice whatever it is that we thought was there. And remember, here we're only talking about the observable universe. Still, so much more is invisible to us, and we'll never be able to see anything beyond this observable universe. So the total true number of galaxies out there in the entire universe that's beyond our observable limits is completely mind-blowing. As a matter of fact, it could even be maybe infinite, if that's a thing. But that's not something we're going to speculate about because we really have no means of knowing this. We can, however, try to calculate the limit of observable universe. And here, at the moment, the number stands at maybe 4 trillion. At least for now, as of 2020. I'm sure in about 4 years, even better calculations, even better discoveries and better cameras will produce even more accurate results. And for all we know, maybe another zero will have to be added to this number. Either way, it's pretty incredible how far we've come in our ability to try to estimate the amount of stuff out there in the universe. I mean, I guess you'd think that it's easy to calculate the galaxies at least because they're pretty easily visible. But remember, because of the sheer number of them and also because a lot of them become pretty much invisible at faraway distances, it really becomes kind of difficult to estimate these unusual numbers and unusual properties. And so trying to get the estimate just using the total brightness of a dark region is, at the moment, the best technique that we have. And it looks like the number for this is, once again, about 4 trillion. Anyway, once we discover more about the total number of galaxies in the universe, or once we learn something else from the New Horizons probe, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.